Introduction Your kitchen shelves must be neatly arranged with rows of food containers, mostly made up of plastics. Plastics have taken so much prominence in our lives, now that we have replaced materials like aluminium, iron, steel and glass with plastics. So let us find out more about plastics in this lesson where you will study about the general properties of plastics and their importance in our everyday lives. Objectives At the end of this lesson you will be able to Define plastics Define thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics Explain the characteristics of plastics and its importance in our everyday life Discuss the harmful effects of plastics on our environment. We get the name plastics because of their properties to be molded, cast or processed into a variety of forms. It is chemically obtained mostly by synthesis of petroleum and natural gas. Like the synthetic fibers, plastic is also a polymer that is made by joining many small similar units. Do all the plastics have the same type of arrangement of units? No. Some plastics have a linear arrangement, whereas others are cross-linked. Have you ever observed what happens when a polythene bag is burnt? Yes, it melts and you can see its droplets falling off, apart from the noxious smell it produces. Do all plastics melt upon burning? Let us find out. There are two types of plastics based on their reaction upon being heated. These are thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics. The constituents units of thermoplastics have a linear arrangement. On being heated, thermoplastics become multiple and soft. Now they can be recast in different shapes and then cooled causing them to harden without any chemical chain. Therefore, they can be recycled. Some of the examples of thermoplastics are polythene, polyvinyl chloride and polystyrene. These are used in manufacturing of water pipes, drain pipes, packaging, bags and bottles, toys, combs, disposable cutlery, CD, and DVD cases. Thermosetting plastic have a cross-linked arrangement of their constituent units. These can be melt and take shape once only. After they have solidified, they stay solid. On subsequent heating, they do not become soft and hence do not change their shape. Therefore, these cannot be recycled. Bakelite and melamine are two examples of thermosetting plastics. The familiar electrical switches, handles of utensils are made of bakelite as it is a poor conductor of heat and electricity. Whereas melamine is used for making floor tiles and kitchenware and certain fabrics as it is fire resistant. Why are plastics so widely in use? The plastic containers are mostly used for the storage of food grains, pickles, salt and spices since these are relatively non-reactive and impermeable to moisture. Since plastic is a poor conductor of electricity, the electrical wires have plastic covering. Did you ever notice that the utensils which are used for cooking have plastic handles? Plastics being poor conductor of heat, we can therefore easily hold the handle of a hot utensil. Not even a single day passes when we haven't seen or used an object made of plastic. It has taken so much prominence in our lives due to a number of its properties which make it convenient to use. It is used as parts in airplanes, spacecrafts and cars due to its lightweight and strength. These are extensively used in the healthcare industry for packaging of tablets as threads used for stitching wounds, syringes, 
doctor's gloves, and a number of medical instruments. Have you ever noticed the frying pan for cooking dosa? You'd have seen a black coating on it. It is of Teflon, which is a special plastic on which oil and water do not stick. Thus, it is used as non-stick coating on cookware. You would be amazed to know that they are also fireproof plastics. Yes, the uniforms of firemen have coating of melamine plastic to make them flame resistant. Can we imagine a life without plastic? No, we surely cannot because it is an alternate resource in the times of our dwindling natural resources. But what price have we paid for it? We know that plastic being a synthetically derived substance is non-biodegradable since the enzymes required for its decomposition are absent in the decomposers such as various bacteria and fungi. Thus, heaps of plastics are collected and dumped in landfills. They will stay there for several hundred years, releasing toxic chemicals into the soil and nearby water resources. Also, as plastics form a cover on the ground surface and are impermeable to water, the rainwater would not be absorbed into the soil, thus diminishing our underground water reservoirs. You must have seen cows struggling to take out food from the plastic bags thrown near the garbage heaps. They end up eating the plastic bags as well. It can choke their respiratory tract or form a lining in their stomachs, causing their death. On burning plastics, it releases toxic fumes into the atmosphere. Other plastic menace is the choking of drains, which leads to their overflowing and flooding during the rains. There are a number of steps that we can take as environmentally conscious citizens so as to safeguard our environment from the growing menace of plastics. We can replace plastic shopping bags with jute bags or handmade paper bags. Instead of littering everywhere, particularly on roads, we should put the plastic objects in the dustbins marked as non-biodegradable, thus segregating them from the biodegradable wastes. Sell plastic scraps to the scrap dealer for recycling. Adopt the policy of four R's, which is reduce, reuse, recycle, and recover. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Plastics are polymers. Thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics are the two important types of plastics. Plastic is non-reactive, light, strong and durable, and a poor conductor of heat and electricity. Plastics find extensive use in the healthcare industry, building materials and pipelines. On burning, the plastics release poisonous gases. Plastics take several years to degrade because of their non-biodegradable nature. Adopt four R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and recover.